Welcome to this special edition of Events.com's Ask an Event Pro, brought to you by Running USA. My name is Bob Babbitt. With me, Mr. Peter Abraham, seriously one of the best marketers around. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bob. Thanks for having me. So let's talk a little bit about your Monday night extravaganza, Art Run here at 10 o'clock at night in, in downtown LA. If you had told me that a group of people could show up at 10 o'clock at night to run, I mean, I'm already asleep. What's, what's the deal? There's a, a new group of runners out there. Yeah, I mean, I would have said the same thing eight months ago, but I've kind of happened upon, there's a, a new wave in fitness going, which is like, it's really millennial fitness, it's social connected fitness and social connected running. And there are probably just in LA, a dozen groups that all run at night, they're all on uh, Instagram. They don't care about qualifying for Boston. And it's really about the social experience. They're often going out to a bar after right. they work out. So we plugged in with, I put together a collaboration with Lululemon, with the Do Art Foundation, the largest public art foundation yeah. in LA, very legit, and um, Blacklist LA, the biggest of these. Blacklist, is that's what it's called? Yeah, Blacklist LA, the biggest of these running groups. They've got 14. 15,000 15, Instagram followers, and their big run, weekly run, is on a Monday night at 10 p.m., like you said, and they get two to 300 people out every week. And I would have told you a year ago, that's impossible, that'll never happen. But the fact is, there's a whole new wave of people working out, and I believe CrossFit is a part of this, and it's about social, it's about being yes. connected, and it's about running is as fun more than running as fitness. They are getting in shape, but the primary objective is to have fun and be social. And that's the different thing. So those are the folks who might be doing color run, might be doing stuff like that. Correct. And they're, but their training is Correct. done at in, night. Right, and in, in big groups. Right, and so it's 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 made me re reevaluate in my mind what a quote unquote serious runner is. Right, like, I used to evaluate that as you may have as like how many miles you're running, how fast do you, did you qualify for Boston, that kind of thing. And these people are very serious; they're running all the time. They're very super passionate. Absolutely, it's, just, it's not really about the time and the competition, and it's about the connection and the social aspect of it. So guys like that might fall through the cracks when we're looking at demographics of running. Right, we're looking at we're looking at marathons, we're looking at half marathons, we're even color run. These folks aren't necessarily signing up for events. Correct. And it's a whole different way of, it's really, it's how millennials work, how they play. Like I, I work out of a shared workspace now, right? Which is like the working equivalent of this, where we've got um, all these different people all there working together, right? We share conference rooms and places, a lot of tech But startups, different businesses. Different businesses. But again, a lot of these people could work from home, but they want to be part of a community. And I think that's what you see. And so in this case, we put together Lululemon, Blacklist, and we put a community together to go run at night, see art, and it was really inspiring, great. People loved it, like you were just out there. I brought Rod Dixon with me, the great runner who's defined his life by competitive running, right. and he was having so much fun. He was like, this is what running should be about. It should be fun, it should be social. So, looking at what's happened over time with running, obviously rock and roll started the, the probably second or third running boom, and all of a sudden you got you know, 60, 70% women, yeah. and, and marathons are, are sprouting up everywhere, and they're all filling up, but to a certain degree, running has flattened a little bit, Yeah. and do you see that? If this is happening in LA, there must be folks like this all over the country Correct. and all over the world. Correct. You've got night terrors in Toronto, you have the bridge runners in New York, they've been there a while, and I think running, like many sports, has to be responsive to the cultural trends that are coming across. Running was very on trend over the last 10 years because it's simplicity. It's right. about simple. And I think the reason you've seen yoga come up like this, single speed bikes, Etsy handicrafts, a lot of things, I think there was a cultural trend about simplicity. Simple things, right? And running very much fit into that. Yes. And now it's really moving towards social, connected things, whether it's fitness, whether it's work, whether it's living, and I think running needs to be responsive to that. And think about how are we relevant to this new demographic? What's interesting, if you look at really the growth of Spartan and Tough Mudder, it was all groups. It was yes. all people getting their friends together going, hey, exactly. I'm going to go do this Spartan thing. Not, almost, not caring that much about the time or Correct. being competitive, Correct. but our group is going out, the 20 of us, who's joining us. Sort of the mob mentality of join us and come out there. Correct. And, and social media has really enabled a lot of this yes. because it's a way to share it. And I even believe that CrossFit is a part of this because yes, CrossFit is, is it's a group experience. You're cheering each other yes. on. So I think it's a, it's a really important um, social movement. And I'm often surprised when I talk to um, big brands or even some people in the media who are, are not quite seeing this yet because I think it's really important. And it's, a, it's a, like a phase shift right now in the culture. Sure. So this weekend we have LA Marathon, we've yeah. got the Olympic Trials. Yes. How big is this for this city? You know, I think it's 
potentially really big for the city. I'm, I'm unclear how many people are going to actually show up for the Olympic trials, right? I don't know. Is it on people's radar or not? We won't know. We'll find till out. Right, yeah. We'll find out. Um, I think it's phenomenal for the running community to have a major city marathon, the Olympic trials, and this Running USA event. I've really seen the whole community come together. I love to see that. Yes. Talk a little bit about the connection with art. Did you, when you ran the other night, did people start at art, stop at art galleries along the way? No, we, we worked with the Do Art Foundation to actually create original art with, with legit world-class artists, all like permanent giant 30-foot high murals of runners really? all over LA. We did four different installations. Three of them were painted uh, or wheat paste on a wall. One was a temporary installation, these giant 12-foot high characters that represented the past and future of running. Yes. We started and finished at LA con uh, uh, Walt Disney Concert Hall, and we stopped about every mile at a piece of art, and the artists would come out and address the crowd with a bullhorn. And, and we had this throng so of 600 people. So would stop people. and hang out. Yeah, and they were cheering, and they'd get pictures in front of it. I mean, the, and the social traffic was out of control on Instagram, and Snapchat was unbelievable. We were trending on the LA stories on Snapchat. And it was, you know, when you give people a great experience, they will tell their friends about sure. it. And I think, you know, I, I'm giving the marketing talk later today, and one of the things I'm gonna emphasize is, look, there are two critical things for your customers. Will, would they do it again, and will they share it with their friends? So those are the two most important things. And if you give them a great experience, they will share it, and they will do a lot of your marketing work for you. Is that what you've seen as the biggest thing in terms of you know, the new technology for a long time? It was Twitter, it was Facebook, but now you're talking Snapchat, you're, you're talking Instagram. Well, it's I mean, yes, I mean, those things are important, particularly for, um, on, if you're under 25, Snapchat is becoming the primary platform. Instagram, also very important. But I think above and beyond that, you know, there'll always be different channels. The most important thing is to create an important and meaningful experience for people. One of the things I try and stress to running events is, they're in the experience architecture business. Like you're creating an experience. When you, let's say you've got a 5K, you've got a husband and wife coming out to do it, it's $45 each plus parking and, and breakfast after, they're spending over $100. You're not just competing against other running events. There are a lot of things they could do with that $100. Exactly. Right, and so you're competing against those, so you, it is incumbent on you to, to create an experience that is important for them. Back in the day, when there weren't that many events out there, race directors were in a position where they sort of could do whatever they wanted, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, what I've seen is the running side of it. You've, you've got to be someone who likes to get up early, yeah. right? And and go to an event that starts at seven, get up at four. Yeah. There's a lot of schlepping involved with going to do an event. No doubt. And when you go to a Spartan or a Tough Mudder and it's at a ski resort, and you could start at 10, you could start at 11, you right. could start at noon. Right. You got all day. You can't block off the roads all day. Yeah. You can block off a resort all day. Yeah. How have race directors had to change to adapt to all of this? Well, I, I mean, I would say some have, some haven't. I mean, you've seen Ragnar Relay has done pretty good with yes. the kind of festival, we're in a van all night, it's not about the competition. And I think if you just look at what's going on out there, you look at the scale of like Coachella, which is like 70,000 people a weekend for two consecutive weekends. Yes. It's an experience. Burning Man is an experience. Wanderlust Yoga Festivals, they're booming, they're doing really well. It's a whole experience, and I think creating a curated experience, whether it's a community 5K one morning, or whether it's the New York Marathon, I think there's so many opportunities to be thoughtful and create a great, compelling experience for people. When I look at a brand like Lululemon, yeah. I think of them as yoga. And coming into the world of running, and obviously runners were, were uh, Lululemon as well, how did you make that connection? Well, you know, I help Lululemon. You're right. They do, they are thought of as a yoga brand. It's still like their mission statement is yoga inspired right. clothing. You know, um, and I think uh, and their product is phenomenal. I mean, they're it's uh, very premium. Their running product. Yes. It's beautiful. It's very high quality. Um, what I help them do is connect authentically with runners. So I'm like a translator in a way. Yes. And I work very closely with Colleen Angelis, their LA Maven, who's really fantastic and really professional. And we collaborate and build events and experiences. Like for instance, a year ago at the LA Marathon, we decided to do a booth in the expo. Yes. And you know, Marathon expos drive me crazy because it's so much about a table and you know it's very kinda, loud. It's too. very loud and, and 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 I just don't see brands ex being thoughtful. So we decided what we would do is the initiative was around mindful performance. That is, how can we bring mindfulness to sports? So we created 
a 20 by 10 booth where you could sit and listen to a podcast of a world-class sports psychologist or a meditation teacher give you a pre-race visualization exercise. It's like the day before your race, you're in yes. the expo, and get you in peak performance space and get you ready for the race, right? And we used a great meditation teacher and Michael Gervais, the athletic performance coach for the Seattle Seahawks, yes. right? Yeah. He's got the Seahawks meditating, doing yoga, and it's working, of course. clearly. And they designed like um, wireless headset meditation experiences for the runners, and we got over a thousand runners through. They were sitting on the floor. We had a, a video playing. They kind of, <laughs> right, so it was all about we're trying to bring value yes. to runners and trying to make your race better and your experience better. And people loved it. They loved it. We got a thousand people through there, and and you know you look at the ex expo. Hardly anybody was doing anything interactive. We yeah. were like almost the only booth that was like, no, come in here and do something. We weren't trying to sell stuff. People just give out samples. Right? That's, Correct. It's, it's give out Correct. samples and hope somebody buys Correct. your product. And I think they've trained the runners of the world to walk around with a bag and go, hey, what do you got for free? And I just find that it's too bad because there's so many opportunities to create value for people yes. in whatever you're doing. And I think brands are so many endemic bands in the running space are just missing that. Were you surprised at the reaction to it? Because yes. Because I, I think runners, a lot of times, especially if they're coming to do a marathon, they're thinking, this is what I always do before a marathon, and it's not meditating. Well, and it was interesting. <laughs> you know, there definitely were a lot of older runners. I'd see them, like, stop 20 feet away and yeah. kind of go, wait a minute, what's going on there, headphones? And then, of course, at the L.A. Marathon, you have 3,000 runners from Students Run L.A., the teenagers, right? And the teenagers, they're not... They don't have they're the emotional back. They're not programmed. So they'd go, headphones? Great, what do you got? And they were all over it. So it was really interesting to see the difference in reactions based on your age, right? Love and that. how the teenagers were right in there. Love that. Peter, as always, I learn so much every time we chat. Thanks so much for taking time. Thanks for having me, Bob. I appreciate it. Peter Abraham has been our guest. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back. Hi, it's Andrea, ping pong champion from events.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more tips.